in the Quran also, woman yaktari ghayr al-Islami dinan falan yukbala min. Islam as such, all of it is in the benefit of the humanity. All of it is in the development of human being. All of it is protection and guidance and good behavior for the human being. And since the Prophet came and conveyed the message, and he said, Innama makari mal akhlaq. Indeed, I have been sent to complete the best characters. Those characters, wherever you practice it, wherever you live with it, you will attract the people to ask, what is this? And if they know, once they know, they will adapt and they will follow. I remember in two occasions, one in America, one in Senegal where I live. The one in America, I was on a visit and a journalist by the name Margaret came to interview me. After she finished the interview, she said, Sheikh, you, as a man of Islam, I have some personal questions which I want to ask you. I said, Bismillah. She said, you as a religious man, do you trust a woman? Because we, we were told that woman has no position in Islam and Islam does not trust woman. I said that is a lie. Allah the creator who created everybody. He trusted them with the people of the highest position in this world, let alone the rest. And those people they are the prophets. Our prophet, the prophet of Islam, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was in the pregnancy, just for two months, his father Abdullah passed away. And Allah trusted a woman with the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until he was born, breastfed with woman, his mother, mainly, and Halima Sadia, and at the age of four, his mother passed away. Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, wa ala nabiyina afdalu salati wa salam, he has no father, he's just a woman. You read the stories of Prophet Moses in Quran, you will never see where Allah mentioned his father, only his mother. Ismail alayhi salam, his father Ibrahim alayhi salam, took them, him and his mother Hajar, and left them in the valley in Mecca where no water at all. If Allah trusted women with those people, why we should not trust them in our worldly things? He said, this one is clear to me. Okay, now, why when you distribute the inheritance, you give woman half of what you give to a man? I said, before I will tell you what Islam said. In the Judaism, in the Jewish religion, a woman has no portion of the inheritance of her father. It's just a matter of dowry at the age of at the marriage. Other than that, the firstborn male will take everything. And in Injil Bible, there is no mention of inheritance. It's only Quran who came and Allah does not ask the Prophet to do it. To do the distribution, but Allah Himself, He made it in Quran. 
in the text of, of Quran you will see if a woman is mother, if a woman is wife, if a woman is a sister or daughter, all these portions you will find it in the text of Quran. Why then we give them half? At the beginning of history, if you read the ayah, Allah was addressing two, Adam and Eve, and said, فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَتَشْقَى أَتَّرَجُلْ Don't let shaitan put you out of paradise, and you the man you will suffer. Today in Islam, if we are to get married, is a man who pay the dowry, is a man who pay the rent of the house, or it is his obligation, is a man who pay the everyday expenses, is the man who offer, who produce the clothes for his wife. An example. My father passed away, and we have distributed what he left for us. Yes, I took two, and my sister took one. But she went with that one to the market and buy whatever she like with that one. The two I have, I add more money to it to spend it for them in the house. I don't think that Islam has done wrong to my sister with one she will do with it whatever she like and I took to and add more money to it and spent it for them in the house. She said this one also is clear. After one week she came back. I said, oh, Margaret, you came today for another interview? She said, no, today I came to embrace Islam. What I have heard from you the other day, all of it is correct. Now, the second example, we have a guest from London, Sam Springfield. He was a mayor of Hackney. He came to visit with us. At the time, I said, Sam, you excuse us, we are going to the mosque. He sat down in the salon and waited. At Asr, I repeated the same thing to him. Maghrib, what I said, I said, Sheikh, Will you allow me to follow you to the mosque to see the mosque? I say yes, if you like. But the mosque is for the Muslims who are praying. When he came with us to the mosque, I enter to the mihrab, and he just followed the congregation and entered the masjid. The way he saw them praying, he did the same movement. He did it in Maghrib. Isha and Fajr. After Fajr prayer, he came. He said, Sheikh, to tell you the truth, I don't know no word of what you recite in your prayers. But I feel it all over my body. What is this? I said, this is Quran. And he said, how much I should pay to be a member in this group? I said, you don't have to pay anything. You have to accept the five pillars of Islam. To bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger of God. And to pray the five daily prayers. Morning, noon, afternoon, sunset, and the night prayers. And to fast the months of Ramadan in every year. <laughs> and if you have wells, you pay zakat. That is two and a half percent to be given to the poor people out of your money in every year. And if you have means and ability to go to Mecca, you have to go to Mecca once in your lifetime to perform the pilgrimage of Islam. He said, is it? I said, yes. And he accepted it. He accepted Islam. And when he went back home, his wife told him, today, today, you get out of this religion, or I will get out of the house. He said, I cannot get of this house. I cannot get out of the religion again. Few months later, I was traveling and passed by London. He invited me to his house to have dinner with him. 
Having dinner with him, there was only one cat going up and down. A cat. The Sheikh, you see all my people, my wife, even my daughters, they migrated the house after I embraced Islam. The only one left in this house is this cat. I said, yes, that's normal. Allah said in the book, Alif Lam Mim Ahasib and Nasu and Yutraku and Yakulu Aman Nawahum Life to Nun. Walakat Fatana Ladina Min Kablihim. Walayala Manala who led in a Sadaku, Walayala Manal Kazibi. Do people believe that they will just claim being Muslim and we let them get away with it without having them tested? We will test them until we differentiate between the truthful one and the liars. And uh, Additional to that, Anas, the Sahabi of Rasulullah, he said, anyone who claim a position in Islam without facing any test, that means his claim is false. And uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab, the day he embraced Islam and nobody bothered with him, the way they used to punish the Muslims in Mecca, Nobody touched him. He said he doubt about his Islam. Oh, they told him, oh, your uncle, he is the one who talked to the people, Mutam ibn Adi, that you are his nephew, nobody <coughs> should touch you. So he went to his uncle, hey, get out of my business. I am Muslim, you are not Muslim. I have nothing to do with you. He said he remember, coming back from the mosque, and non-believers beating him up and down, right, left, until he reaches his house. By the time he reached house, all his clothes, he said, was destroyed. He said, now I felt that I am a Muslim. Wow. Because they treated me the way they use treating the, the Muslims. Then, wherever you go, with the characters, with the behavior of Islam, definitely you will attract the non-Muslim because Islam, all of it is nice. Islam, if it is true with the person, he's the best husband, he's the best wife, he's the best neighbor. Listen to the Prophet Islam say that he is not a believer. He <coughs> who is sleeping in, on his bed while the next door neighbor starving out of hunger. Love for yourself what you love for people. Love for people what you love for yourself to be a good Muslim. Islam is a, all of it is nice. And the Prophet Sallallahu his Lord, praise him in Quran with the statement, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Those characters, if you have one of them and travel with it anywhere in the world, definitely you will get people to accept it. And they had to have the answer to, I think that really in, in a nutshell sums up the success story uh, of, or your success story in propagating Islam. Uh, in America, it's an age when, uh, when the most of the Western world did not know that much about Islam. Uh, I think we can go to Sheikh Jiri. When it comes to, to, to the African American Islamic Institute, what can you tell us about what the Institute does? What, what, what are the main, uh, uh, the main facets of activity of this Institute? We, well, the African American Islamic Institute is an NGO, a non-governmental organization, <coughs> which is established by Sheikh Hassan. First of all, the name, why African American? Because we've been working very closely with the African American community in the United States. As I told you, we have a community coming from the African American Islamic community who stay with us, they study with us, and we do so many different things together. And this, in this NGO also, we are working together for humanitarian efforts in order to uplift, uh, uplift our people.